Hello everyone, Watches Review here with a look at the DC Universe Classics, The Spectre. The character was a cop, well the first one was a cop who was murdered and then was offered a chance to come back to life as a ghostly being and then seek retribution against you know, the people who killed him in addition to also putting a stop to crime. Of course after that he ended up um, you know, the Spectre has actually been a few different characters, including Hal Jordan at one point. Now, ironically enough, uh, the first appearance for this character was in More Fun Comics, which, you know, uh, people being killed and coming back to life for revenge. That was just good old fun back then. That was the 40s, you know, anything goes back then. But yeah, um... When the wave first came out, uh, probably not a character I really cared that much about, but since then, I've seen a few things that have made me more interested in him. Uh, hold on a few seconds and I'll get him out of pack. First off, I feel like calling attention to the inner blister for this figure, which has this really cool skull design on it. We have a whole bunch of them. Now, um, mine probably is a defect or something, but sort of have like this little phantom imprint where I guess they started pressing in then the actual thing came over here unless of course this packaging is haunted Ooh. it's uh probably not haunted yeah but um comes with a pin featuring some JSA characters including the Spectre himself as well as the arm of Darkseid the normal hand and then forget what this one's called, but, you know, it just looks a lot like the Infinity Gauntlet. As for the Spectre himself, I should mention that he comes in two different versions, a painted version and a glow-in-the-dark version. Um, guess which version I got? I'll give you a hint. But yeah, um... I opted for the painted version just because I thought it would look nicer, but ultimately, I mean, the glow-in-the-dark one probably would have been a lot of fun as well. I don't know. It's always a toss-up when you have to choose between the two. The problem with the glow-in-the-dark ones, too, is that they kind of, well, the effect sort of wears off over time in many cases. Now, um... I'm not 100% a fan of this design and everything. I really wish they had done something a bit more dramatic with the cape, like if it come in front of the character or, you know, just had a lot more versatility. But, you know, it's a decent cape. It's got a, um, it's really soft rubber. It's not like a lot of the other capes. I think even the Dr. Midnight's cape was nowhere near as malleable. Though I don't know offhand, I'd have to go back and check it. Then, of course, the character's pose is just really cool, where he's got the two open hands. I believe, like, that's the same hand pot gesture they used for one of Eclipso's hands. I would, again, need to check that one out to confirm it. At any rate, he comes out looking pretty decent, despite his, I guess his whole body looking kind of standard in many regards. A uh, quick run-through of articulation while I'm just on the subject. He has rotation here at the wrists, single joint elbow, rotation at bicep, ball jointed shoulders. I don't believe that the cape is really going to impede because it goes right underneath. The cape's kind of mounted up a little bit. Absolute diaphragm joint, waist joint, legs kick forward out, rotation here at thigh single joint knee, then single joint here at the ankle. Uh, Design-wise, again, mostly standard parts, but the boots are a new sculpt and subsequently so are the calves because the upper portion of this boot is actually on the calf portion, so... Of course the gloves are just one separate portion. Now the head kind of has this hood, but the hood is attached. It's can't be pulled back or moved or anything. There's a um, darker 
just sort of like a black ink sort of tossed over the forehead area just to give the face more definition I think. kind of wish that they had done like something of a wash you know with just darkened portions in some areas. I mean, it looks like he kind of has the effect well no I think it's just natural shadowing on the arms but I mean just given the sheer amount of white on this character I mean it'd be nice if there's something to kind of break that up a little bit. Although again you know that basically is a lot of the look of the character. Also, it's one of those characters that really could use a flight stand. You know, you do have a really decent looking hover here with the feet and everything. Um, all in all, you know, really cool looking character. Probably not like one of my favorites for whatever, but definitely very neat. I'm not sure how I'll probably display them or whatever, but... I mean, if I do buy flight stands, I probably will just pop them up on a wall or something someplace. Yeah. Um, kind of out of things to say. I like the figure. Um, one I didn't really think I probably wouldn't have liked when I was just looking at the pack and when the wave information first came out, but... Um, definitely a cool one. Uh, this has been a look at the Spectre. Till next time, folks. By the way, just one more quick additional note. Now, whereas a lot of the capes with some of the figures have a tendency to, like, separate at the shoulder and stuff, so over time they could hypothetically fall off, um, his cape is connect all across here, so that's never going to really be an issue. And, in fact, the way it's sculpted with the, um, collar here and then with the lower part of the cowl. I mean, it looks like it's permanently locked in place so that won't even really move out that far. Which, you know, is a nice feature from a design standpoint. <laughs>